What's your favorite light novel? Mine is Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned How to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. I know you guys love um, the... <laughs> just starting right into it. I know you love the fever dream jokes that my brain comes up with. Um, obviously, the, the all-time classic is why do they keep making juice in cartons? How are you supposed to get the juice out of the corners? I woke up at... Um, 12.30, which is not like, I, I went to bed at like 10.45. I woke up at 12.30 when my daughter was crying a little bit. And there was just one singular line in my brain. And it was, it was this, and it's like verbatim, word for word. <clears throat> and I quote, Was Barbieheimer like a good dad or was he one of those guys too distracted building his atomic wall or whatever? And I just kept, like my brain just kept repeating it over and over and over and over. Was Barbieheimer like a good dad or was he one of those guys too distracted building his atomic wall or whatever? I have no idea where it came from. I guess, obviously, there's been a lot of Barbie and Oppenheimer content on social media lately. I don't know. The brain is a mysterious thing. It's a mysterious thing. Why are people talking so much about these two movies? I don't know. It's like a, you know, imagine if Snakes on a Plane came out, but it was actually good. At least from what, what the critics are saying. I am laughing at all the Oppenheimer discourse. None of these motherfuckers have seen the movies. They're like, why are they glorifying Oppenheimer? Have you seen all the promo material? The dude's in like a, a dimly lit room holding his face. People are like, I really hope Oppenheimer shows. I, why are we making movies that glorify the construction of the atomic bomb? I'm like, excuse me. Are you trying to tell me that there were negative consequences to the atomic bomb? This is the first I'm hearing about it. The film is very pro-nuke. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I bet, because it's Christopher Nolan, I bet the film doesn't take a stand. The, by the way, you, you guys don't even know what it's like. If they made Oppenheimer in 1994, it would have been the most like, rah, rah, we rule, the enemies drool, movie ever made it would be an inspiring story about how like eight plucky scientists came together to win the war single-handedly and dropped a bomb on the bad guys you know we're we're living in a much more nuanced era now where like i'm sure he's gonna build the nuke and then he's gonna like be sad in 1995 it would have won best picture and it would have like exclusively been you, you people would have been in tears. They would be like, I didn't think that those eight scientists could get the job done. What do you think kissed by a rose on the gray means? It's very true. It's very true. What do you think kissed, on the, kissed by a rose on the gray? I do, but I mean, like following the, my literary sensibilities tell me that when you are kissed by a rose, it means you are simply breast... Uh, <laughs> You're blessed to be in the presence of something beautiful. Um, on the gray, I don't know, is maybe like a, a, a dull part of, of your existence, a dull part of your personality, a dull part of your life, a dull part of your body. I don't know. I think if you're kissed by a rose on the gray, it's like in Pleasantville when the people who are in black and white all of a sudden start to be in technicolor after they find out about the existence of the female orgasm. I think that's what it is. I, th I think it's that previously your life was uh, in muted monochrome and uh, being kissed by a rose has given it a little bit of a blush of color, shall we say. That's how I take it, at least. I mean, just follow it. There used to be a graying tower. That's him alone on the sea. You became... The light on the dark side of me. I can't hit that last note. Love remained. A drug? <laughs> That's the high, but not the pill. Now that one, I gotta, I gotta tease that one a little bit. 
A drug that's the high and not the pill. But did you know that when it snows, my eyes become large and the light that you shine can be... It's a song and a half. There's no doubt about that. It's so fucking funny that that's from the Batman Forever soundtrack. I don't know. Is there any other example of a song that crazy good being from such a weird fucking movie? Okay, I I do agree. Justin Timberlake's um, Can't Fight the Feeling from Trolls is... I, I don't think it's as good of a song as Kiss from a Rose, but still... Happy from Pharrell Williams being in Minions? Well, I don't think Happy is a very good song. But maybe that's just because I was alive when it came out, unlike most people in my chat. So I had to listen to it four times every time I went to the grocery store. Pop star never stopped popping. Fuck Bin Laden. So true. 20, 2016. You don't understand what it's like to be in school when Happy came out and forced to dance to it for more than three school performances? Uh, there's some truth to that, I suppose. There's some truth to that. Being forced to dance in school was really... It's wild. I know we're just wasting time here, but... I, <laughs> I have two stories. I've always thought that the art should stand on its own merits. I'm not anti-other people dancing. But you know in, like, second grade... When you sing songs, there would always be corresponding actions that you were supposed to do. I remember we were singing like, Little Bunny Foo Foo, I don't want to see you, scooping up the field mice and bopping them on the head. We had all the actions, and I wasn't doing the actions because I thought that the music stood on its own merits. And then um, a girl, I don't even remember what girl it was, but she was across the circle from me, and she pointed at me and was like, you're not doing the actions? And I just kept not doing the actions. I kept just singing the song. And then she put up her hand and she was like, Ryan's not doing the actions. And then the teacher made me do the actions, which is crazy. And then there's a, I don't know if this is from kindergarten or first grade, but my parents have like a home video. And I, I'm not going to say the girl's name because she was like six years old, just like me. But we're singing songs at the assembly. I'm not doing the actions. And she keeps hitting me. Like she keeps slapping me on the shoulder, being like, do the actions. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do the actions. My parents show me the video like once every two times I'm back. I don't like the actions, man. Is it funny? Yeah, it's funny. Like, I'm not mad about it, but I was kind of, I was ticked off about it when I was in kindergarten. There's no way in second grade you thought this song stands on its own. Brother, I think that... <laughs> I'm starting to realize that I might not be neurotypical. Because definitely in second grade, I, th I remember having that single cogent thought. I also remember being like, um, I don't want picture books because I can already like picture what's happening in the book in my brain. I, why would I need? Because then like I have my own idea of what this book is, the pictures that are being painted, what the characters look like, the situations. And then you got like a pic. What is this picture doing here? You're just making the book like twice as much, take twice as much paper for no reason. Stop calling it the actions, it's dancing. What are you talking about? It's not, it's not dancing when you just like, your, your feet are anchored in one position on the floor and you're just doing, like acting out the, the meaning of the words with your hands, like the Happy Hands Club from Napoleon Dynamite. Those are actions, it's not dancing. Dancing requires at least the slightest hip movement, in my personal opinion. I walked in on my mom and her friend when I was six years old while they were doing actions. Okay, who asked? Probably had like, you know, a, a three-minute window to get down once a week. Your needy ass was like, yeah, I'll sit here and watch Barney. 90 seconds later, you're like, Mom! I need you right now! It somehow is their fault that you walked in on them. I used to hear clapping at 2 a.m. constantly as a child. Did you live next to a nightclub? Or like a NHL stadium in the playoffs where they were playing until quadruple overtime? Or <laughs> did you, were you sleeping 
inside of an airplane? Did you live on an airplane that was landing? I ate my first chicken nugget at 18. No, I don't believe this. I'm sorry. I believe that there are people... Sometimes I think that the audience conflates my statement when I say something like that. I don't believe that there's nobody on earth who ate chicken nuggets for the first time at the age of 18. There's all sorts of, you know, 8 billion people, all sorts of crazy individuals out there with unique experiences. I just don't believe that you're the, I don't think you're the person that had chicken nuggets for the first time at age 18. I know a girl that's never eaten grapes. I know a 30 year old who's never eaten a strawberry. I'm 25 and I've never had a Coke or a Pepsi. I'm trying to, I bet I have something like that. I mean, for a while it was mac and cheese. I had mac and cheese for the first time at like age 27 or something. I guess that would be almost as weird as not having a chicken nugget. It's worse? I know, mac and cheese is a lot worse than chicken nuggets. That's why I ate way more chicken nuggets than mac and cheese. Minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. Canadian who doesn't like craft dinner? I didn't say I don't like craft dinner. I just said I've never had it. I don't know if I like it. I'm just not that interested in the mac and cheese, honestly. It looks like we are not doing Jackbox today. Hang on, I've got a reply to this message. Me, are we playing Jackbox today? Justin, I didn't think we were, so I told Apollo I'd Valo. Whole Wednesday. We were supposed to bully Apollo for playing Valo and not London. Not join him for Valorant based Hijinks, I think is a good word. What's worse for society, Valorant or opiates? Valorant, 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 I thought so. I'm not saying that Valorant's worse than opiates. That's what Chad is saying, okay? That's true. One fixes pain. <laughs> I don't know if that's the verbiage I would use, but I guess technically. One manages pain. And one causes pain. So true, so true. Maybe I'm just a boomer, and I like, I, whenever I see someone play Valorant, even when they're winning, they're having a horrible time. But maybe I'm operating on an antiquated idea that games should always be recreational. Like when you watch a movie, you don't, if, if someone said, I only watch movies that make me feel good, I would be like, you're nine years old. You need to grow up and have like a more advanced media diet. You know, watch some stuff that makes you uncomfortable. Watch some stuff that, that creates a greater depth of emotion in yourself. Watch some stuff that, that teaches you something. When someone plays a video game that teaches them, like, the depth of human misery, I'm like, bro, why don't you just play, like, uh, something else instead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Holy cow, listen to this. Oh, it just, sorry, it's... I forgot it's a Japanese game, so if you ever uh, click on anything, it takes you into, like, a... Uh, a sub menu with a different song and uh, you know I had another joke brewing today the joke is like Japanese games will be like um, well let, let me alt tab to get the music a little lower Japanese games will be like featuring a rich story campaign and 17 other modes including the options menu a sound test menu and the credits North American games will be like Experience high-octane gameplay across 35 meaningfully different multiplayer, single-player, co-op modes, online, offline, etc., etc. And then the Japanese game will be good, and the North American game will be bad. How messed up is that? I don't get it. I feel like anytime I play a Japanese PC game, the second bullet point in the features list is always something ridiculous. Like, you can save the game! The second bullet point for like a triple A North American game is always like featuring over 935 photorealistic maps at a one to two scale replica of real European battlefields. And Japan third bullet point is like four unique songs. And then the North American game is like a four out of 10 and the Japanese game is like an 8.2. I think they're closer to figuring it out over there. I gotta get the title of this game in my brain. Slash marker, those games. 
Okay, you gotta give me a second here, stream, because I gotta do like a little bit of an, an alt tab, okay? Because this is the longest game name that has ever existed in humanity, on Earth, etc., etc., etc. The game is called, <clears throat> yeah, you want those games, right? So here you go. Now let's see you clear them. What the heck is it about? Well, you know how like when you see a, a mobile game advertisement, it's always those insane mini games that are like, which one of these uh, pins should you pull in order to not have your dude get uh, immersed in liquid hot magma? This is a game that posits, what if those games were real instead of just lies? Because basically, it's always like, um, hey, but what, what, hey what, what Erlenmeyer flask should you pour the liquid into to, to fill it up? And then you buy it yourself or you play it yourself. And it's like, you know, Age of Empires 1. But anytime you want to get a Wololo, you have to put in your mom's credit card number. So that's, it, it just looked interesting. So we're going we're gonna to give it a try here, okay? Now I'll say I, I don't get uh, caught by these ads. But if... There was ever an ad for mobile games that infuriates me to the point where I want to download it myself. It's not the, you know, can you climb up here? It's not, can you pull the pin? It's always the one that's like, um, someone is like running. It's an endless runner and there's two paths that you can take and there's gates. And then the gate is like, multiply the amount of people you have running by a hundred or like add one and they always run through the add one and I'm like, what are you doing? They like, oh, a times a hundred plus one times a hundred plus one plus one. And I'm like, you are, you've lost your mind. Find the treasure. Okay. What's going on here? I guess we didn't even need to do that now that I think about it, but at least we learned something about the, the wizard. Hunters will kick wolves if the pin blocking them is removed. I gotta be honest with you, maybe it's good that when you download these mobile games, uh, they... I gotcha. They are nothing like the actual uh, ad, because the ad <laughs> game is not that interesting. <laughs> Maybe the appeal of the advertisements is that you lose your mind thinking you're so much smarter than the other person. That, that, that seems to be the reality of the situation here. Hang on, I'm gonna drop this thing on your frickin' noggin, bro. I imagine a hunter would probably hurt me. Oh, come on! I'm gonna play up to 10, okay? Well, th this is simply impossible. This one can't be done. Never mind, I think I got it. What the heck? Run, brother. Oh, no! <laughs> Failed. That's embarrassing. Okay, retry me. This It can't be done. It can't... Oh, I know what we gotta do. We gotta do this and this. Let the hunter kill, kill both of them and then drop the rock on his head, okay? And then we go. Okay, and you can make it in time for three stars. Holy cow, that one was borderline impossible. Now, which one looks the most interesting? I gotta say it's probably parking lot. Get all the cars out of the parking lot. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually a little scared. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this game is so um, easy that I don't even understand what the puzzle is. Because right now the puzzle just seems like you're just clicking on each car and pressing a button. So maybe you should start me on level 11. Oh, no! Okay, why don't you go here? And then, like, so, whoops. You go out. You go here. You go here. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys gotta go, too. I thought it was just the red cars. I know exactly what to do here. You, you're going. Whoops, wrong way. You, you can leave. You can leave. You can leave. You're free. He's crazy. What? That's supposed to be hard. 
Watch out for the baddies, they roam the area with knives. And will be very angry if you hit them with a car. <laughs> Me when I get hit with a car? <laughs> I can I get a, a replay on that clip? I don't think I hit him, man. With God as my witness, I don't think I hit that man. I'm sorry, I just I I think we've pretty much mastered parking lot. I, I literally just don't get it. Stack your cash to get over the obstacles. <laughs> I, I, I simply don't understand it. We have to unlock every single one of these individually with its own animation? Like that's it's just laborious, man. This is crazy. <laughs> New stage unlocked with your accumulated, uh, your accumulated IQ. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go over the lava. Me personally, I'd like to make it over the lava, and then maybe I'll get another vaccine. I've made it all the way to celebrity status. Holy cow! I need that extra bit of. Oh no! I'm dead! I fell on the spikes. Take me to number 19. Holy cow, they're, they're not messing around with this one. Why don't you start me up with a little studying? It raises our money by 100%. And then I'm gonna stack some more cash. I've made a horrible mistake. I've been impaled on spikes and killed. Gamble. All right, uh, first I'm gonna die if you don't mind. I'm gonna die by walking into a fence twice, getting a virus and then walking into the fence for the third time. We go again. What the, what? Oh. It's not going that well, lads. I just fell in the boiling ketchup. Just like the ads. 50%, oh. Oh, I'm rich, I'm dead! Me, when I'm on that submarine, I'm sorry, it's just the first thing that popped into my head. It's kind of tasteless. Listen, I'm not a gambling Andy. I'll study to simply double my wealth. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Please. He's the guy from the ads? I'm not the guy from the ads. The hitbox is all is all jacked up, man. The hitbox ain't right. I will study once more. Oh, as a toe walker, when someone's toes touch solid ground and not boiling ketchup, I'm like that shouldn't count as a fall. It's just because you guys are like, yeah, see, because you're heel walkers, that would kill you, but it wouldn't kill me because I'm built different. Please, sir. Kate, what are you talking about? I'm doing my best. I'm trying to, you want me to spend money to be safe? It's not like when you go to Disney World, they're like, the seat belts are an extra 50 bucks a person. Well, don't give him any ideas. Then I'm going to go to work, and this is probably like the highest score that's ever been. Oh, I'm gorgeous. I progressed from... Rich to gorgeous. But still did not get three stars. Oh! <laughs> Six wives? Who am I, Spider-Man? Okay, take me out of here. <laughs> I'm not sure about this game. Oh, uh, to be honest with you. Spin? Spin me? This is why I hate video games. They're all about the male power fantasy. Am I crazy to think that this seems... A thousand times harder or wait maybe I'm a genius it turns out I'm a genius in the color laboratory this is a game for toddlers what are you talking about I I just earned a thousand coins for doing the first color lab and you're jealous I think is what's happening here I don't think it has anything to do with uh, toddlers also I'll tell you I have a toddler this is not a game for toddlers it's literally just matching colors. No, I'm, it's Tower of Hanoi. You guys love Bioware games. You're always like, oh, play Bioware games. Play Mass Effect Andromeda. It's my favorite game ever. Meanwhile, we're doing Tower of Hanoi 
in the most distilled and pog rich format you could possibly get. And people were like, oh, it's too easy. It's too easy. It's for little kids. They literally make toys of this for babies. They literally don't make toys of this for babies. I'm a grown man, okay? I think, honestly, you're probably just a little bit jealous that I'm no longer the guy in the ads. I don't think we need to play Color Lab anymore, honestly. <laughs> I think we've made our point in Color Lab. What else we got here? Number Tower. Number Tower is the last one. Oh, <laughs> no. Forgot we gotta spend 10 minutes here first. Do a high level pin pull? Uh, pin pull's not my game. If we were doing the pentathlon at the Olympics, honestly, I think, truth be told, my color lab gaming is like Olympian level. My pin pull gaming is maybe like NCAA Division I athlete. What the hell is this? I'm dead. <laughs> um, I guess I would like to fight the number eight. And then number 17. He is the ad guy. I guess after that, I would probably fight the number 19 personally. Maybe that's just me. It's literally just counting numbers. Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. High level pins, please. I'm just going to be honest. I think that, like, for a game design standpoint, it's very humorous that they made a game. That is like, what if the mobile game ads were real? It's absolutely miserable to play though. <laughs> no! Ad guy, ad guy. Can I tell you I have a, a tragic story for you? I played Pokemon Go yesterday for like the first time in probably three or four months. I used my daily incense while taking my daughter out for a nap in her stroller. I encountered a Galarian Zapdos, okay? It's like a super low percentage chance to encounter one of those birds. I hit it with a golden raspberry, waited for a good opportunity to throw a great curveball, threw a, threw a curveball that was not great, Dude popped out of the ball in one millisecond and 99% of the time they run away right after that, but he stayed. So I hit him with a golden raspberry and I made sure to use all my focus to hit him with a great curveball. I hit him with a great curveball, not excellent, but great. He popped out of the ball in 0.1 milliseconds and then flew away. Why are you playing Pokemon Go in... 2023, just a fun game to play when you have to take your kid for like a walk. You're like 40 years old. What, what should I be doing on my walks with my with my kid then? As a as a 34 year old man who, by the way, is not nearly 40. Because if I'm 34 and I'm nearly 40, your 19 year old ass is actually like 12 years old. So you know, I'm just saying, if we're all treating each other equally. Taxes? That's what I did the first six months of the year. I'm not like normal streamers. I finished my taxes on time, so I didn't have to be like, oh, IRS, please waive the penalty for late filing. Okay, what's your mitigating circumstance? I didn't want to do them. I didn't want to. You could just like walk. I mean, listen, I, I've gone on walks without Pokemon Go. According to Pokemon Go, with the app open, I have walked... 2.1 million meters, okay? Two megameters. At some point, you're gonna need a little bit of distraction just to keep your, your head in a good place. I can't believe I'm actually thinking about just playing level 35 right here. <laughs> do, you have it on, do you have it in the car? No! I don't play Pokemon Go while I'm driving. What do you think this is, 2016? 
1,300 miles? Yeah, 1,300, I played 1,300 miles with Pokemon Go. It's normal, you go on a walk, you got your headphones in listening to a podcast, you're pushing a stroller, you're out there for like 90 minutes. No big deal. What's the, I don't understand the problem here. People be like, wow, you're playing a game while you're outside? Have you ever considered that you could just not be playing a game? Have you ever considered shutting your mouth? One high level pin pull? I'm not sure I'm cut out for that, okay? Holy cow, you can click and skip the animations. What the hell is this? Destroy everything? How am I gonna destroy this boy up here? <laughs> Step one, pull this pin. He got melted by the lava. You gotta fall over the- Oh, you know what? I gotta get you to like chase me or something. Lads, I think I'm cooked. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> like, a, a, this goblin's gonna freaking eat me down here. Okay. Get melted. Don't worry, I got it all figured out. Looks a little bit like this. Oh, come on, just move to the right a little bit. It's gotta be like that. That way the lava moves opposite wise from me. Then I can pull this without being killed. Oh my god, literally just move slightly to the side. The finger tells you what to pull. False. Although maybe we should slow down. Oh! You know what though? I think that was a good start, because check this out. Get cooked, idiot. And then, then it's impossible. Never mind. Get get rid of this lava. Certainly, you're gonna pull that one. You're gonna pull these two. <laughs> I can't. I can't make it, man. I'm gonna die. Oh man. I'm so close. I'm so close. Is he doing this on purpose? Listen, this is not in my skill set in real life, okay? I've never had to deal with like a bunch of goblins and the only way to get out of the situation was like, um, pulling a bunch of weird pins out of the wall. Click as fast as you can. Holy cow. Just don't touch this thing, and you're fine. Oh! <laughs> Holy, that's a three-star performance if I've ever seen one. Okay, slash marker. Those games. Let's never do that again. <laughs> oh, man. He hates the GeoGuessr mode? Here's my problem with the GeoGuessr roguelite. It was insanely easy, and then I, they changed it, and all of the comments were like, man, you really made it even easier, huh? So, like, I, I think that, like, it already needed a little bit of, of difficulty, but now they've made it even simpler. There's a new Steam game called Bonnie's Bakery, a cooking game where nothing goes wrong. Play as Bonnie, a cute baker who needs to gather ingredients so she can make pastries. Serve up your fresh homemade pastries to local townsfolk and hunt for fresh ingredients. Reviews. Let her cook. Absolutely love this game. 
Bonnie is such a goofy goober and definitely not a serial killer. Is this a Doki Doki Literature Club? I love this game. It's short, sweet, and charming. Nothing sinister going on here. Nope, not at all. The different modes are a lot of fun and the story is interesting. Also, Bingus. <laughs> also, I, th listen. The person who wrote that review might be 15 years old. I'm not trying to hate on them, but it very clearly had like some of the letters were capitalized. And I was like, oh, I bet there's like a spoiler if you put them together. And then at the end of the review, they wrote, by the way, there's definitely no hidden message in this review at all. Nope, definitely not. You see the clip of uh, Vinny where he's playing Viewfinder and he takes the photo and then manifests it into real life, which allows him so to I'm walk the, to uh, a place that was otherwise inaccessible. And then the How cool would that voiceover be? says, did you just turn a photo into real life? And then he immediately goes into the options menu and mutes the voice acting. Great clip. Great clip. Listen, you might you might have saved me from sap. Not that the I mean the weekly this week is actually really interesting. But am I gonna play Bonnie's Bakery? I don't think I'm gonna play Bonnie's Bakery. But then there was a Minesweeper roguelite that people told me to play. It just came out on Steam. It had a unique art style. It was called, not, not Demon Crawl. Demon Crawl's a great game. Hey, it's called Let's Revolution. Thank you, thank you. Balatro? People will be like diehard Balatro fans. They don't even follow uh, the Balatro news. I, my, my key has not been revoked, but it's about to be revoked. The developer politely asked me to wait until the game's closer to being ready to go. No, put, put me back in. I was in, the person in charge of making sure uh, Steam gets updated every day and doesn't work anymore. Is that for some reason, I can't... There you go. Your purchase could not be completed because it looks like you already own one of the games you're trying to buy. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm trying to click on store to take me to the store tab. But instead, I had to use the in-browser back button. Let's revolution. Holy cow. 1,800 Steam points for this purchase. Ooh... Your Steam point balance is 510,787. <laughs> what do you do with Steam points? If this was Nintendo points, I'm pretty sure that I could buy uh, like the company or at least get 50% off the new Mario sports game. You can get profile cosmetics. Is that why every time I see Chibli sign on to Steam, there's like fireworks that play and like he's got a sparkling gold background on his, uh, on his guy, on his bloody picture? Let's revolution. Let's not. It, would it, I don't want, yeah. Listen, I want to make my title a play on the name of the game. So I want to call it Let's Not and Say We Did. But I think that might be considered like it primes people for thinking that I don't enjoy the game, but in reality, I haven't actually played it yet. It's mean, but it's, it fits so well. <laughs> okay, new, new Twitch meta. Brand new roguelite minesweep, brand new minesweeper roguelite, get in here. Me losing faith in humanity as the viewer count goes up by 30% in the next 10 minutes. Last stream, retiring. <laughs> stream will end unless I get 150 extra viewers right now. Slash marker, Let's Revolution. Let's Revolution is a new Minesweeper type roguelite with 96% positive reviews and a beautiful art style that has been recommended to me by multiple people. Let's give it a chance here. Hey stranger, Rodden King got you down. Well, now's your chance to rise up. He's right over there. Oh, who might you be? Does another loyal subject wish to kiss my ring? Can I tell you something? Um, the tile setup looks so much like the game Carcassonne. And uh, I, I could play a mean game of Catan, don't get me wrong. But Carcassonne, for some reason, just never worked with my brain. I don't think I'm, I'm willing to build the roads for the kingdom. I think I'm supposed to be the guy who works like um, in the mill before they invent the water wheel. And I'm the guy who like grabs the, the rod 
in the basement and just walks in a circle for like 10 hours driving the mill so that it grinds up the, the wheat into flour. And you might say that's like torturous. I honestly think it would be kind of freeing to know that you wake up in the morning, you eat breakfast, four hours of turning the rod, 15 minute lunch break, four hours of turning the rod, go home, eat dinner, go to bed and run the same thing back tomorrow. It's like the medieval Peloton. So true, so true. You think you'd enjoy being in a prison camp? My only question is whenever you see like a movie where they're in a prison camp, why they got them breaking rocks? What are they doing with all the broken rocks? I don't understand. They always give them like a pickaxe and they've got them all like in the desert breaking big rocks in half. Like what are they, what economic purpose could it possibly serve to be breaking the rocks in half? Gravel's important for infrastructure? Is, th is there no naturally occurring gravel? They were, they were making artisan small batch handmade gravel? I honestly thought there were like just maybe like gravel pits in the world. There's not enough naturally occurring gravel? I'll tell you, there is in Minecraft. I wish there was less, honestly. Anyway, let's go through the tutorial. I'm stalling. Select a highlighted tile to move there. Enemies will attack after a set number of turns regardless of where you are. Okay. Select this tile to move closer. I'm on the road now. This guard's clock is now full. He is about to attack. Watch and learn, soldier. Stick him. Stick him good. Enough. Close the distance so you can attack him back. Ouch. You lost the heart. Don't worry. It looks like you could take a hit. Ha. A palpable hit. Now give them a good smack for our king. Okay. Here comes a big one. Time for some payback. Select Roundhouse. You have selected Power Drive. It takes eight energy, cool down three, attack all eight surrounding tiles. Now select yourself to attack all the tiles around you. That oaf just killed them. How rude. Stop them at once. I killed you with a, with a single punch. Now select Roundhouse. You have selected Power Drive. Get killed. But I was supposed to be the hero. How preposterous. You will be punished. You eliminated all the skulls. Now go get the king. He has escaped Dr. Wily style. Get chased. All clear. Plus three. You know what I realized? Gamers hate tutorials. But then they love asking, how do I do this? There's something... So messed up about that. Literally you? I know, I'm a gamer. Now let's find the king. Maybe you'll be the one to take him down. These icons tell you there's three skulls hiding alongside the king. You're low on energy, but you have a trait called stamina that restores energy every five tiles you go to. Gain six energy for every five tiles. Okay. Select this highlighted tile. Move there to reveal it. Good, let's keep going. Oh, it's an enemy! Oh no, you stepped on a hidden skull and lost a heart. So this is the Minesweeper element. So there must be an enemy here as well, right? Because this had two enemies adjacent. So you're an enemy, which means you're an enemy as well, which means I'm setting up for a freaking roundhouse or something. No, numbers equal the number of road tiles, not the number of enemies. Oh, okay. Noted, noted. You can always rely on, and this is not meant to be offensive to the developers, you can always rely on chat to know all of the mechanics for a game that you just heard about yesterday. Even if it came out, it has nine reviews on Steam. There will be like a thousand people in chat that are like, I know how this works. Go ahead and say it, say it. I watched Moon Moon play this. I watched Germa play this. I watched Vinny play. I watched Retro play it. There we go. Okay, I'm not, I should have known. I'm not the first person to get on the wave, but... I played the demo. Shut up. I got you. I'm the best. Um, just ignore him for now. He won't attack for four more turns. Listen, skulls only hide on road tiles. I see. And the numbered tiles tell you how many road tiles are nearby. The tile you're on has a three. So there, this must, one of these two must be a road, but we know that this must be a road because otherwise there's no way for there to be two. So we can avoid a road by moving to the left. Therefore, this tile can't be a road tile. You need to reveal three more tiles to gain energy. Select this tile to reveal another. That's right, run away. Your energy is low, but you can use your bow to take him out. 
You'll never hit me with that dumb bow. Select your bow. Something tells me I will be able to hit you with this dumb bow. Get smoked on? Well, I was wrong. <laughs> that shut him up. You're still low on energy, and the bow won't be ready for five turns because of its cooldown. Select this tile to reveal it. The tile you're on is a one, and there's one visible road, so we know everything around us is safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move to this safe tile to activate stamina. He's crazy. Your energy's full again. The six tile must have a lot of roads nearby. Let's use a skill there and see what you hit. Move to the six. Select the roundhouse. Let him have it. Holy, he's crazy. I see. So that was like, we didn't know that the enemy was there, but we could make a, a bet that the enemy was there. Because enemies only spawn on roads. There were six roads adjacent to this, and there's three enemies on the level. So it was, it was likely that one would be there. A proud warrior of flocks. Reveal tiles to recharge your powerful attacks. Defeat all enemies for a bonus. We'll play on normal difficulty, and let's revolution. This does seem cool. Dead ends are always safe to reveal, so look for spots where the road must end. Enemies don't spawn on dead ends! Dead ends either have the king or a reward. Alright, okay. What is this art style called, too? If the devs are watching, you should know this is like a... I mean this very positively. I'm a hater. I'm constantly insulting um, adult animation. I'm not talking about Kubo and the two strings who spirited away. I'm constantly insulting like Steven Universe and Bob's Burgers and stuff like that, mostly because I, I don't get them and that's fine and I'm trying to entertain people. So I maybe lay it on a little too thick sometimes. But this is like good adult animation energy. I don't know how to describe it because I don't know anything about visual art. But it's like, it's, it's got a, a sense of style that evokes that energy in a way that doesn't offend me and instead it intrigues me. I think we come here. It'd be better to leap to a corner. I bet there's a way to, to make it out of this. Let me think about this. One of you two is going to be a space. One of you two is going to be a road. Wait a minute, we know this must be a road because it's connected to another road, which means you're not gonna be a road. We know that all of these spaces are guaranteed to be roads. But instead of spending seven energy, give me a leap to take me to the corner. We know you're going to be a road, which means you're not a road. You're guaranteed to be a road, which means you're not a road. You're all guaranteed to be roads. But you are the dead end or the king. Hey, now, now this is a great roundhouse opportunity here. We've, we've caused the king to escape. Am I crazy to think that this is an enemy? There must be an enemy right here, right? He's insane. I guess I probably should have used energy instead of ammo, but whatever. Chase the king. He's going to be so confused when he gets punished. Punished for what? Being perfect? We know you're safe. 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 The heck is this? Energy orb. Vigilant. Starts revealed. Self-destructs and drains 50% of this hero's energy. On defeat, restores your energy to max. This must be a dead end. Huge. Take me to the smith. Desperate hour. Gain three energy reduction. Hang on, this one's gonna feel good. Sorry, there's always gotta be like one sacrifice. I know when you're like the 900th person to type, why is he so stupid? It probably feels like it's not justified that you're the one who got banned. Because you're like, what, 899 people did it before? Why am I the one who sets the precedent? Well, sorry. It's also not fair to be playing a video game and have a thousand strangers be like, your IQ is uh, under question right now. But life's not fair, apparently. So I'll see you in the unban requests. Owned, owned, owned. Don't be the people that type owned when you also type question mark every time I take a move, okay? This has to be a road, which means this isn't. And then these should all be zeros. Okay, look at that. It's called math. You better work, bitch. 
This is three roads. I am killing you. I didn't know you don't have to be in the uh, same row or column to attack with the bow until just now. Remember when I said streamers love to be like... <laughs> I don't want to do this tutorial, and then they also love to be like, how do I do things? How do I work this? Two piece. You would be forced to be a dead end. You're you're def you're definitely not safe. Ow, that must have hurt. The tiles are listen. <laughs> they gave I did something so bad that they legitimately said zero means nothing's there, idiot. How embarrassing is that? They're worried about you. <laughs> you can flag like in Minesweeper. Okay, instead of being like sarcastic, just tell me the button. It's not middle mouse. It's not right mouse. Space bar. So we know you're, it's, it doesn't appear to be space bar. Look at your movement range. We're not talking about my movement range right now. I lied. F11. Control? Doesn't appear to be control. Hang on, hang on. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Aaron apparent. Yes, but he skipped that prompt. Slash user. Aaron apparent. Let's take a look here. One time out by Mubad, two years ago. This game is getting trunked fast, Sag. Yes, but he skipped that prompt. Smoke bomb or cartwheel? These are the types of games that stave off dementia in old age. Good roundhouse. Hang on. I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of uh, balatero backseating as well. I'm just waiting for the let me F5. What's the, what's the flag button, Aaron? Aaron, you said I skipped the tutorial. What's the flag button? They've escaped. <laughs> They've exited the chat. So you can dish it out, but you can't take it, huh? They smoke bombed. Slash user Aaron apparent. I was I, all I did was ask a question. You said there's a flag button. I said what is it? You didn't have to close the tab in a rush. I'm not installing like malware on your computer. Last message: smoke bomb or cartwheel. Is there a the, at Gymnast City, where Gymnast City wrote this message? Is there a flag button like Minesweeper? Reply, yes, but he skipped that prompt. I was just asked what the, what the question was. I just asked what the... Uh, your name's permanently locked in the database now. You can't escape by just closing the window. Can you just answer the question? You were so confident you knew everything about the game. They should make a golf video game. Like, this is kind of a crazy statement. Because I know there's a lot of golf video games. But considering, and I know where I'm going with this one, I know where you're going to go with this one. Considering how relatively easy it is to make an arcade golf game, it's crazy that there's not like a flood of them out there. Like Nintendo made Mario Golf, and then there's Golf Story, but like it's kind of nuts that there's not like two amazing arcade golf games a year made by indie developers. I'm talking about like a, not curse the golf, that's not my tempo. <laughs> I'm talking like, why are there less Hot Shots Golf clones? Where's all the pickleball games? So true. Pickleball. Pickle Clicker, The Great Pickle Adventure, Hot Pickle, Pickle Frickle, and Hot Pickle Soundtrack. There's no pickleball game? Did you see that in Chilliwack, British Columbia, um, a couple who owns a house next to a pickleball court is going on a hunger strike to try to convince the city to install like noise dampening equipment around the pickleball court? Because I, I didn't know this, apparently, Pickleball can get up to like 110 or 120 decibels while it's played. It's very easy to, and I mean, I, this was my first reaction too, to, to look at the family and be like, I mean, like, you're going to go on a hunger strike because of this? That seems a little insane. But then, 
when you see that it's like as loud as an airplane engine or something like that, you're like, you know what? I'm not saying they got a point, but I guess I can put myself in their shoes. There's, I know they can make noise abatement walls as well. I think that's what they're asking for. They kind of got screwed though, because like they bought a house, there was no pickleball court there, and then the city built a pickleball court like in the park right next to their house. And the city, I guess, shouldn't necessarily have to like clear it with them, but they can at least understand why they're messed up, or why they're feeling messed up about it. Don't NIMBY this. They didn't, they didn't NIMBY it. They let the pickleball court be built. They're just like, the shit's noisy. Can you turn it down? In fact, they're actually YIMBYs because they're saying, they built a pickleball court in my backyard. Now, can you also build noise abatement walls in my backyard? They're asking for a lot of stuff to be built in their backyard. Is pickleball really louder than tennis? I guess the, the ball itself is like really hard, right? And the tennis ball is, is rubber, so it makes more of like a boom. YouTube it? Sound, pickleball versus tennis. Okay, uh, 15 second intro is yeah. too much. The net in the center is two inches higher at 30. Really interesting. The pickleball, hitting the pickleball paddle is 30% less loud. Not more loud, less loud. But the pickleball has a higher pitch than a tennis ball. And therefore, tennis players find it distracting because it's a different sound than they're used to hearing. This is a tennis ball. This is a tennis ball. That's a pickleball. That's a pickleball. As well, more pickleball players can fit in the same area of a tennis court than tennis players. So there's more balls being hit. There's more chatter. And also with pickleball, the points are longer. So there are more ball strikes per point, and per hour, and per minute of play. We'll be continuing this discussion in other tips that we'll produce of this series. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like I learned almost nothing. I really just wanted someone to show me how loud a pickleball was, but you learned it's 30% quieter? He didn't show a source or anything. Just watch a game of it. Pickle Ball World Championship 2022. Well, like this isn't fair because it's like professionally mic'd up. So like they dampen it for the audience out there. Like, I need one that's just like a, someone's iPhone on like a pickleball court. 2021 Margaritaville USA Pickleball National Championship Pro Mixed Doubles Bronze Medal Match. Holy cow. I don't know. I don't care. I've decided I don't care. Why SAP? You should be thankful because from now on, SAP is the only uh, game I'm going to play on the stream. People will be like, play games. I play a new game. Everybody's like, uh, is this dude the stupidest idiot on the planet? And then next week, they'll be like, where's the games? And I'll be like, you fucking killed it. Look at your chat logs, asshole. No wonder all these streamers are just going live doing things they're good at. Eating fast food from 14 different restaurants in a single day. They got it all figured out, man. Hey, Danny Kaza, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Perfect docket. Go live watching TikToks. Become a member of Chad. Laugh at everything that you see on TikTok. Insult other creators instead of making yourself an object to be insulted. Three hours of TikTok reacts. Eat lunch. Just make mouth noises and say, oh, that's so fucking good. People say, what is that? I say, it's a Chick-fil-A sandwich. They say, that's so fucking good. Someone says, aren't you concerned about Chick-fil-A's anti-LGBTQ stances? Ban them permanently from the chat. Three more hours of TikTok reacts. Spend an hour cooking up a tweet about how I've had an 80-hour work week. 
Don't reply to any emails from any potential sponsors. Don't sign the contracts for activations that you agreed to two months ago. Don't reply to any of your direct messages. Leak them all on stream. This is the way, man. This is the way. No wonder the biggest streamers aren't playing games anymore. It's a thankless job. Okay, slash marker. Sap. I feel bad I didn't get to play too much of the weekly this week because it's a very interesting weekly. Some people like it, some people hate it. Um, but it, th th what I'm saying about it is, and I mean this in not in like um, a backhanded compliment sort of way, I think it's a very fun weekly that is super different than the average weekly. I wish I got to play more. I'll be a super auto sausage. Unfortunately... My kids' daycare had to have a medical emergency, very selfish of them, which meant that my uh, child has been home from daycare for four days this week. They only went on Monday and then a half day on Tuesday. So as a result, we now are, uh, we, we didn't get a chance to record too much Super Auto Pets this week, but that's life. That's just how she goes. What do you pay your daycare for? They're very inconsistent. Yeah, but they got you like bent over a barrel, pretty much. You know, the, the thing that you love most in the world is in their care eight to nine hours a day. What are you going to do? Antagonize your, your daycare uh, provider? Yes? I know you don't have kids. You can't do this. You can't be like, I'm never having kids. And then when I ask when, a hypothetical question about having kids, you're like, here's what I would do. You wouldn't do anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> you've made that clear to me on many occasions. What are they going to do? Hit your kid? I'm not suggesting they would hit your child. Like they're, it's just a medical situation. It wasn't like, uh, you know, they just decided to go to Cancun for a week or something like that. But all I'm saying is, you know, if, if you start to antagonize the daycare when it comes time for snack time and, you know, there's only six apples to go around and somebody's got to eat a Bartlett pear, maybe all of a sudden your kid finds himself eating the Bartlett pear instead. Pears are better? I've, I've been a, a pear defendor for so long. Ever since we had our kid, I've been eating like way more fruits. I'm willing to admit that I was simply wrong. Pears are just not that good. And I really went to bat for them for two decades. My parents used to throw them in my lunch. I would take them to school. Some pears are the perfect softness. They're, they're like just, they're one quanta of solace away from mushy. You eat a pear and you're like, it will be mushy in six hours. That's the perfect time to have a pear. Sometimes you get a pear, you bite into it and it like makes your soft palate bleed. Like you bite into it and it like perfectly forms like a mold of your upper teeth that you could give to the dentist to like build a retainer for you. Sometimes it's like biting into a piece of bark. They have a, the pear is too inconsistent. I like the flavor of a pear. I'm not willing to deal with the inconsistency of the pear. I would, if I'm going to eat a pear, I'd rather just eat an apple. And I'm not even that apple pilled or pen pineapple apple pilled. But I, I, an apple's flavor might be a little bit worse, but apples are so much more consistent. And moreover, you know when an apple's going to suck ass because you grab it and you squeeze it and you're like, this shit is like mashed potatoes on the inside. It's going to be horrible. That's just the way it goes. You grab a pear, you don't know until you take the first bite. I've been eating a lot of berries because my kid eats a lot of berries. Berries are definitely great, man. Pure sugar? Brother, is fruit. You know what you sound like whenever you say, like, strawberries have too much sugar? You see that subreddit that's called, like, um, I Didn't Have Eggs? And it's all people leaving one-star reviews of recipes where they didn't actually cook the recipe. They made a substitution in the recipe, and then it sucked. And then they gave the review as if they made it verbatim. Like the, the one that went viral was like for carrot cake. And then it said, yuck, carrots have too much sugar. I used a cup of shredded kale instead. Well, my cake came out like not sweet and gummy. And you're like, yeah, that's why you use carrots, man. You see, or the one that was like, it was a recipe for mold wine. And they were like, this wine was too sour. Yuck, it tasted like vinegar. And then the 
reply from the original author was like, just so you know, you're supposed to use apple cider, as it says in the recipe, not apple cider vinegar. They, they use like two cups of vinegar plus a bottle of wine. Like, it's just, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> or the one that, uh, it was like, you're supposed to use a teaspoon of chili paste. And then the lady gave it a one-star review and said it was too spicy. Her husband was crying when he was eating it. It turns out she used two and a half cups. Two and a, a, a teaspoon is 15 milliliters. Two and a half cups is 625 milliliters. It's like 50 times the dose. My God. She was trying to kill him. It's, it seems, and these people vote. That's the scary thing or something. I don't know. Or the one that gave it a one star review for a recipe and said, just so you know, this recipe isn't very friendly to people who have like, they have to have low oxalate diets. And then the author was like, this isn't a low oxalate recipe. It's just, people are going, they're losing their damn minds out there, man. Place me, buff me. If the lioness is gonna get us there, that, it, it actually had to be that. So I appreciate what you've done for me, but we really, we gotta amp it up real quick. <laughs> I don't think we're getting there, but. Four snipers on their squad? I'm completely dead and they lived with one HP. The world is so fucked. <laughs> Motherfucker. I feel like I'm stupid, but I can't refuse the stoat. Because the potential payout of the stoat is so funny. If you can get a level 2 or level 3 stoat, sell it when you get tier 6s, and then it spits out a lioness, you're golden. But what it always does is it spits out like a fucking 1-1, one, one, I don't even know, just 1-1 one, one oyster or something like that. And you're like, what am I doing? Oyster wouldn't be too bad. It's really bad for econ. Because your ass spent like 30 gold getting the stoat to level 3. Okay, you got me. So then you sell your level 3 stoat and you get 10 coins back from the oyster. And then you got an empty space on your squad where your level 3 used to be. It gives you gold when you need it. I don't want gold though, I want stats. 10 coins later is better. You guys are crazy. You've lost your damn mind. If you wanna give me $21 right now, and then in 10 rounds, I'll give you $10 and pay it back, I'll take that loan any day of the week. Isn't there like 8% inflation in SAP? Like the gold isn't worth as much as it used to be? That isn't how it works, this is a video game. Maybe for you, you princes of Maine, you kings of New England. Not for me, this is my life. Hey, Shog Noble, thanks for the 2100 bits. We really appreciate it. I'll, I, how do I, I, do you have wealth, simple cash? It's kind of hard to, as a Canadian, it's harder than it should be to, uh, harder than it should be to give money back to Americans. If you're, if you're two Canadians, it's no problem. Interact e-transfer. Wealth, simple cash, $5 bill with a hockey pond on it. If you have to give money to an American, it's really hard. Because, I mean, you could use PayPal, but I don't like it. Go into PayPal, make sure you type in their email address 100% perfectly. Then it's like, are you buying something or paying for goods and services? And you're like, I don't know. I don't want them to get like audited by the IRS for like this $40 repayment or whatever. But I, like, I also don't want to pay PayPal 2% just to send it. Like PayPal is literally not doing anything in the process. Here's a solution. Your solution is ass. Well, you know what my actual solution is, is that I don't find myself in debt to Americans. PayPal in San Francisco is basically like a never ending frat party where everybody earns $500,000 salaries because their business is just free money. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like I get that it's also just kind of like the bank. That's why I was so offended when there was that banking crisis earlier this year. I was like, how could you be out of business? You're the bank. I get, oh, you don't understand that now is duration risk. They got a lot of liquidity when rates were super low. And of course, as you, when you have cash, you, the cash wants to generate a yield. So they put it into like 
treasuries that were yielding 25 basis points and then when the environment changed and the liquidity got pulled out yeah yeah but you don't but you but you don't do anything you don't people give you money for nothing all you have to do is manage your duration risk that's it man and you you screwed that up you're the place where people give their money for free and you couldn't even handle that don't get into the streaming business it's too tough for you it's the second easiest business on the planet, next to banking. You forgot about FinDom? Well, I think that that's reasonably, well, and let's not say reasonably tough necessarily, but I think it's tougher than streaming or banking. Because they could be giving their money to anyone. <laughs> There's plenty of people out there in the FinDom industry, I'm sure. You know, you got lots of competition. In Canada, there's five banks. It, it, I mean, the, Canada didn't have a banking crisis this year, so maybe that's <laughs> maybe it's because there's an oligopoly. TD Bank goes hard. Wow, tell me you're a TD stand without telling me you're. Well, I guess you told me you were a TD stand by telling me you were a TD stand. Now that I think about it, I don't. They all suck. I went with I my progression in life. I banked with whoever my parents banked with as a kid. Then when I went to university. I looked up who had the ATMs on campus and I switched my savings account to that bank. So when I took money out of the ATM, I didn't get charged $3 for having a different bank every single time. Then when I got out of university, I went back to the bank my parents were with and I've been with them ever since. Even though at some point my parents swapped banks. They were like, just so you know, we're swapping banks because we're not happy with our service. And I was like, all right. I am happy with my service, but you do you. And now, why are you NBA pilled now? Listen, don't even start with me, okay? Did you see the post that was like, which of these teams of first, uh, first overall draft picks would win? 90s, 2000s, 2010s. Listen, let's start with the obvious. 2010s has no shot, okay? A lot of the players that were drafted first overall in the 2010s. They just haven't panned out. They haven't had enough time to pan out yet. You know, Zion Williamson's only in like year three and he's preoccupied. Everybody's saying 90s. You guys are crazy. Yeah, I know they got Shaquille O'Neal. I know they got Allen Iverson. But the rest of the squad, except maybe Tim Duncan, they're washed, man. They're washed. 2000s win. LeBron James. Yao Ming. Who else was it? Dwight Howard. Those are three pretty tall dudes. How are you supposed to beat those, those tall dudes? D-Rose, exactly. And I'm thinking it's D-Rose in his prime, probably. Not D-Rose like, you know, now. No disrespect intended. Terrible take. I'm telling you, here's the thing. They play them out. I'm thinking that 2010s win zero games. If they play 10 games, 2000s take seven, 90s take three. Probably because 2000s would win the first six. They'd probably take the rest of the series off. Now, here's where things pop off. First off, the sell of the century. Oh! Okay. Oh! That's what you want. And then, try not to die. Which probably involves tigers and crocodiles. is my expect oh, 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 my expectation <laughs> okay when are you using the lansford north dakota brother you don't want to get me started on this because <laughs> you, you you know that i did see the conversation oh get old so what was the conversation there is a class of people out there that for whatever reason are real estate I don't want to say bubble deniers because I don't want to use the b word They're, they deny the idea that real estate is more expensive relatively now than it was 30 years ago for whatever reason because it doesn't serve them well okay regardless this was someone who said here's a house you can buy for 100 and, uh, for fifteen thousand dollars in Lansford North Dakota sure it needs a little bit of fixing up but literally like they're like the average job in Lansford North Dakota pays like forty thousand dollars a year so after tax you could pay it off in one year all of the replies were like, I don't want to live in Lansford, North Dakota, though. It's 45 minutes away from a town whose downtown has one coffee shop and a community center. 
Then they would reply, the original poster would always reply, hey, there's nothing wrong with living in a small town. Their words, not mine. Once you get out of your get, let's get crunk phase, it can be nice to have land and settle down. Sure, that's true. Then people said, I, I mean, I shouldn't say it's true. I should say I agree with that to some extent, but I think they're making, they're, they're not responding to the argument in question, which is basically that like, you know, some houses cost less because they the house sucks and the place that they are is not desirable otherwise the price would go up because of supply and demand also they were like we don't want to live with you in lansford north dakota and this guy was like oh i don't live in lansford north dakota then why is your ass proselytizing lansford north dakota like literally you're saying it's not even good enough for me to live there it's like population 934 or something like that. That dude didn't even live there, but he was like, hey, quit complaining about the fact that in any population center with over like 100,000 people in the United States, houses cost like 40 times the annual salary pre-tax. You could just go live in Lansford, North Dakota instead, like me, except I don't even live there. Doesn't, doesn't make any damn... 200 people is not even 900 people? Your ass gotta connect to the internet via Starlink? Like, I, I don't know why people like, I guess I, it's cause it feels good online when people agree with you. I, I was gonna say like, I don't understand why people online will just make like unforced errors like that. Oh my God, their squad is just mine, but better. Did you see where he said that homeschooling is the way to go and doctors were overrated? Listen, I didn't see that. I think that there was kind of like a, an inference there that that was what was happening. But now listen, this is the tricky part. Because at some point it's like, you got to go. But I think we win this round. I think we win this. I'm betting on us. Listen, it's, it's not false to say that you can, as you get older what you desire out of a residence changes. Your idea of a, a good neighborhood might be more based on things like, are the schools here good? Is there a good grocery store nearby? Is this walkable? It might be less like, I don't know. I was gonna say like, are, what's the nightlife like? But that's even like kind of insulting because I'm sure there's lots of young people out there who are like, I don't base where I live on the nightlife. I base where I live on, you know, what's the nicest neighborhood that my ass can afford. It's fair to say though that your priorities change as you get older. At the same time, if Lansford, North Dakota was a nice place to live, more than 200 people would live there. I'm not insulting North Dakota. The pictures that they showed of North Dakota were beautiful. But I'm just saying he didn't show a $15,000 house in like another city in North Dakota that I could definitely name. He was talking about Lansford, okay? I just don't like when people are like, there's no such thing as like real estate being too expensive. You just have to want it more. And then they go to like Zillow and sort low to high. And then they're like, check out this crack house in a place where nobody lives. There's a reason why. <laughs> sure, I get the idea that like, it's annoying to hear that like houses are expensive and you're like, where are you looking? And you're like, downtown Manhattan. But like, that's where people want to live. And they're just complaining. Like, you don't have to, you don't have to make it like part of your identity. Like, my thing is always like, if you live in Lansford, North Dakota, or a town like it, and living in Lansford, North Dakota is like so fulfilling, then you shouldn't be online arguing with people that are trying to buy a house in San Francisco because that happens to be where their job is. You should be out enjoying the acreage that you bought or something like that, not posting like, life here is so good, I'm saving so much money, um, you are a fool and an idiot, because why are you, they're out eating tuna tataki tacos and you know, having a fun time, your ass is arguing online. It's a bad, if you really love the place where you live, it's a bad advertisement for it. Because your ass isn't doing anything except getting rankled online. Although, maybe it's if you don't want people to move there, then it's good to make people that live there seem insufferable. 
But if you want the value of your house to increase, you should be out there going like, everybody move to Lansford. We just got the cafe service food now. People will be like, holy shit, I got to go to Lansford, man. This is why you were shit talking sook. Vancouver Island's got a lot to answer for, honestly. One thing I do like about it, we, we stopped at a town called Sook. That's all I got to say. Were you in real Sook or East Sook? Listen, motherfucker, the town's got 10,000 people. You don't get to have an East when you got 10,000 people. Vancouver gets an East, okay? LA gets an East. You got a Tim Hortons, an A&W, and an ICBC. There is no East. There's just Sook, okay? He was in East Sook. Motherfucker, you, you don't even know, man. You don't even know. Two fucking A&W ass having Sook. Audacity to say there's two distinct municipalities, Sook and East Sook. Sook has 21,000 people. East Sook has four people. That's seceded for some reason. We like Coffee Way more than we like Tim Hortons. Okay, make your own fucking principality. See if I care. <laughs> NL doesn't see stats. He's just match three pilled in his burned out brain. I'm winning, motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> you didn't replace your 2523 tiger that doubles the efficacy of your crocodile with a 4450 sauropod that doesn't fucking do anything. Relax, Poindexter. Everything's fine. You got nothing to worry about. Some of this, roll me. See, now I actually, I'm pissed off because now I think you're in the right. Now I think you actually do sell the tiger and you just throw a level one crocodile back here, but you probably move that back one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We probably don't draw, but just in case. Why not combine? Simple economics. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. My brain's a little fried. <laughs> 10 wins, who cares? Streamers rule, chat drools. Thanks for the freebie. That was all thanks to the stoat. You see Obama post his summertime uh, playlist? And then one of the members of Boy Genius called him a war criminal? <laughs> yes, I did see that. <laughs> I was just checking. I'm a millennial. I thought it was cool at first when Obama posted his reading list and his, his summer jams. Because you're like, he's just like us. But now I'm like, there is a part of me, and I think everybody agrees, which is like, why? Who cares? Like, I just don't understand. It, why do I need to know that this year, he, Obama's been bumping celebration by Cool and the Gang? It's completely irrelevant. Bro, you were the president. Can you tweet something like of merit? I don't understand. Why do we need to know anyone's opinion? Well, I just, I'd like to think that people would put my ass on blast if I paid someone to build like a fucking graphic that's like, here's my summer jam and it had like a pastel kaleidoscope thing behind it. And like, I think you would be like, why are you taking yourself so fucking seriously? Or why, maybe why not take yourself a little bit more seriously? You used to be the, the leader of the free world. And now you're like, check it out. I'm listening to Bibi Adubi or something like that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, why, why are you posting it? Our CEO shared his summer playlist with the company today. It had eight songs on it. That's so good. I can't imagine for what purpose, but... <laughs> Michael Scott vibes? Well, I honestly feel like, yes, the CEO sharing his summer playlist is, is Michael Scott vibes. But I also feel like Obama sharing his summer playlist is Michael Scott vibes. Like, can you imagine what kind of... And I, I was going to use harsher language. But can you imagine bumping some tracks at home and then your spouse is like, what's this? And then you're like, oh, this is Obama, Barack Obama's 2023 summer jam playlist. Like, what kind of person is like, I gotta go home and build, like, a Spotify playlist immediately and bump this shit in the kitchen? Like, it's... <laughs> Why are you listening to uh, Car Wash, a song that came out 44 years ago? Oh, um... <laughs> Barack Obama just rizzed up Car Wash on his Summer Jams playlist. So, honestly, I think I'm getting in... I'm getting in pretty early here. 
It's just weird, man. Oh, you think he's getting paid by Spotify? All right, I love that for him. What's your Peloton jams for this year? Um, if I was going to make a Summer Jam playlist, here's, here's the Summer Jam playlist right now, okay? Damn, I Wish I Was Your Lover by Sophie B. Hawkins. Just like, hev just like Heaven by The Cure. Folks, let me be clear. I'll respect you if F the police is on it. See, the, Mouth can verify this, by the way. Frick the Police is not on my Summer Jam playlist, but I did have an NWA poster in my room in my third and fourth year of uh, university. Because I was bumping straight out of Compton pretty much like every day. And skipping like seven of the tracks, but not the good ones. That's so funny. Why is it funny that I like good music? Why would you be surprised that I, that I listen to NWA? Because you're bald and pale? Harassed and racist? I'm going to call a drone strike. Sorry, I'm still in, I'm just doing my Obama impression still. <laughs> I forgot. It. Hey, hey, we'll go. We're, okay, uh, folks, I'm leaving now. All right, okay. Here we are. I'm back. What did I miss? You're going to see Barbie or Oppenheimer? Listen. I'm bald and pale. I'm not going to see either of them. Because we don't have like a babysitter. If I was going... I would like to see both of them. If I was going to see one of them this weekend, it would probably be Oppenheimer. Because I know what it's about and I like predictable stories. I don't know what's going on in Barbie. It doesn't threaten me. It just isn't my pack one, pick one. Plus, science is on my side. Not just because Oppenheimer is a scientist, but also because it has a higher meta score and the higher Rotten Tomatoes firmness rating. As a result, the objectively right choice is to see Oppenheimer. So it is crazy to me that people keep tweeting insane stuff about Oppenheimer, though. They're like, the only way to see this movie is in IMAX, Dolby Atmos, you know, with subway surfers on the one side of the screen. Bro. It literally took place at a time when everything was black and white. And you want, you want me to roll out the red carpet to see it? It doesn't make any sense. People are saying it's the number two Chris Nolan movie right now. Yeah, but like a lot of people saying that have Dunkirk as their number one. That's not my, uh, that's not my tempo. Dunkirk is actually, <laughs> and this is not a, a good opinion, but it is true to myself. Dunkirk is my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie I've ever seen. Nobody has short-term memory loss. Nobody travels through time. Uh, nobody gets, does a heist five layers of dreams deep. Nobody dons a bat suit or anything like that. Nobody goes into outer space with a cool robot that looks like this. You know what I mean? I don't like... I, well, I still... I thought Dunkirk was good. But it's not my ideal kind of Chris Nolan. I like the Chris Nolan stuff that he makes for like smart 12 year olds. Anyway, where is I going with this one? <laughs> I don't like the movies that he makes for um, British people who were alive for the Second World War. I like the ones that he makes for people who grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Tenant number one on your list? Nah, man. You gotta be honest. Like, this is not a. Again, this is not a cool guy take in 2023. Number one is The Dark Knight. Now, I'm not like that cape shit pilled, especially for DC stuff. So like both The Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begin slip down the list. It's not like it goes Dark Knight Begins, Dark Knight Rises. It probably goes like Dark Knight. Then for me, it's like Inception. For me, for me. It's Inception, The Prestige, Memento, Interstellar, Dunkirk. Can I say something? Is, 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 uh, wait, I forgot Tenet. Tenet's above Dunkirk for sure, but below Interstellar. Maybe above Interstellar, I don't know. Here's some shit that's going to fuck with you, okay? Batman Begins is a better movie than The Dark Knight Rises. But I am going to put The Dark Knight Rises higher on my list. 
because Batman Begins is kind of boring. Movies to watch Subway Surfers in the corner too. I don't like, you know why? Because for me, half of the Batman movie appeal is the villain. Joker, great villain. Dark Knight Rises, not a great movie. Bane, pretty good villain. Tom Hardy did a, a funny job at the very least. And I don't even, I've seen Batman Begins like three times. He, I don't even know what he does. He's just a guy. He's just a nefarious guy. He's spooky. He's got bad, bad vibes. What about the Scarecrow though? Yeah, but the Scarecrow's in the movie. He's like the, the red herring. He's like, he's the bad guy. And then afterwards, they're like, no, actually, it's Liam Neeson in a suit, you know, moving money through Swiss bank accounts or something like that. I don't want that. I want a dude who's like half crocodile or something like that. <laughs> I want a dude who like can transform into mud or, you know, something like that. I don't want just a guy who's like, I have, I carry a lot of power I project into the world. It's fucking, you're fighting the dude in the bat suit. Be made of clay. Okay. What about Matthew Nolan? Is that the Nolan brother who's in prison for like killing somebody? For being a hitman? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What if Liam Neeson in the Dark Knight, or sorry, in Batman Begins was made of clay? Well, you don't need me to tell you that that would make the movie better. You got eyes. He literally was, though. He's not, because he would have been forged in the fire at Wayne Manor. Instead, he was killed, except not really. If he was made of clay, then they would have gone back into Wayne Manor and like sifted through the ashes, and there would have been like Liam Neeson's, Neeson's face on like a pot or like a vase or something like that. And you'd be like, you know, Batman would have put like the flowers from his parents' grave in the vase, and that would have faded to black and been the end of the movie. He was literally made of clay. What are you talking? You know what drives me? People are saying this is how it works in the comics. I know you're trolling me, okay? But the video of every clip I see of The Flash is against my will. And it always causes so many questions to rise up in my brain. The, the clip that I saw last night of the hospital falling over and the maternity ward uh, gets tipped. And all the babies fall out of the window, okay? So they're falling to their death. And then the Flash is like, I'm going to save them. And uh, he looks at, he's going super speed. And he looks at like one of the babies and is about to get like pierced by glass. And then there's another baby that's literally falling into like a, a jet of pure flame. And it, like all of the babies are in peril. There's like 10 of them. And then the dude just goes to the vending machine and punches the vending machine and starts eating Twix bars. So many of the replies were like, why is he eating snacks instead of saving the babies? And then, blue check fucking, you know, sorry, sorry, I call it like I see it, was like, in the comics, whenever the Flash enters super speed, he needs, his metabolism also proportionally enters super speed, so he needs to eat a lot of, okay, really, for him to run at the speed of light, he needs to eat eight chocolate bars. Well, that's the way it worked in the comics. So these are movies that real people are gonna see, okay? It's not like a checklist that's like, does this fulfill all of the baseline rubric criteria from the cut? Like, this is entertainment for mass audiences, man. Because that's what I'm saying. He should have just eaten the babies. <laughs> or one of them, and then the sacrifice of the few for the good of the many. No way he could digest it that fast. His metabolism speeds up proportionally. So apparently, if you run 100 million times faster than the average person, you need to eat 10 times as much food. I don't make the rules. I'm not Jack Kirby. You'd know that if you read The Flash issue 91 from 1973 where he and Invisible Girl get into uh, hijinks together. Sorry, I thought, I, I thought in the modern era you could just pay $100 for a movie ticket and see like a two-hour movie that stands on its own two legs. Apparently not. You need like so butt-fucked with context from like a hundred years of other media that you had to see in order to understand what's going on at all. And don't even get me started on the fact that every single shot looks like you're about to take control of your character in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, okay? Mmm, pineapple, so good. Did you see that Pinky Doll is making $7,000 a day on TikTok Lives, plus 
an extra four to five thousand dollars in OnlyFans signups. It's honestly aspirational. Did she pay you for this? No, she's taken over media just by the power of her presence. Did you see her talking to her kid and she's French Canadian? She's your people? I don't think I'm French Canadian. I know I have a French Canadian last name. But I was trying to think of like, I, I've never done like an Ancestry.com or something like that. But I was thinking about how I could have a French last name but not be French. And I was thinking like, I bet, here's how I think it went down. You gotta go back like, uh, like eight generations. There was like a French guy, pure French all the way down. But then he married someone that was 0% French. They got married. They had a son who's 50% French. 50% something else. Then that son, because he retains the name in our primogenitor male-driven culture, married another person who is like 0% French. Like I think the, only, the name got passed down 100%, but the genes got halved at, at every generation. I don't think I'm French. I think my name is French. I think I'm like 2.5% French and 97.5% Australian. Do people at the airport talk to you in French because of your last name? All the time. Yes, they do. They do always hit me with a, a bonjour followed by a bunch of stuff that I should understand but don't. Um, and then I look at them with a vacant stare and they say, oh, he's an Anglophone. And then they say nothing else at all. They just usher me through the gate in disdain, seat me right next to the lavatory and <laughs> take turns punching me in the face until I pass out. This weekly sucks. Listen, you, listen, you. Shut up. It doesn't suck. It's just different. Sure. I, the thing that drives me crazy is people are like, this weekly sucks. You either go early snipers or you go late lionesses. That's every weekly. Okay? You either go, oh, you, by the time you get to Friday, it's either like early team Buffalo or it's like, oh, you go snipers, you know, or you go summoning, you know, there's this, this is a good weekly because it's different. You built the same team every time? Yeah, because I've only done two runs because I've been talking about the Flash the whole time. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not Scooty's fault, that's my fault. If you could add an animal based solely on the animal, what would it be? Tough question. I'm gonna say dog. No, fuck, um, elephant. I think, check this out. You, you, you're tired of seeing the same squad every time? <laughs> I was supposed to go on the snake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, sheesh. Egg is sap. Tell a friend. So true. Folks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that. Is that a reference to... Um, John Keats, I'm bald and pale, so I'm not familiar with all this, these so-called rap artists. I think rap is crap, personally. It doesn't take any talent, it's just talking. You know what takes talent is, is singing a tune that'll bend your ear, something like, Camp Town Races, sing this song, do da, do da. Camp Town Races, 10 miles long, all the live long day. Oh, I've never had a level three lioness win? Says the guy who can't sing. Excuse me, the streets are saying that I can sing now. They are. The streets are saying I can, I can sing. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying it's what the streets are saying. What street? Sesame Street? There's some good songs on Sesame Street. So I take your joke and I substitute my own. I'm not talking about sunny day, sweeping the clouds away, on my way to where the air is sweet. Won't you tell me how to get, how to, get to Sesame Street? I'm talking about uh, Billy Porter, Friends with the Penguin. I am certainly not talking about, um, I mean, if, listen, I know that Common is a very beloved rapper and I, I got some love for Common's early to mid discography, but he did make the corniest song in Sesame Street history. The one that is um, Belly Breathe. Hang on, I don't know, this might get DMCA'd. 
Wait, it's on PBS. Your taxes paid for this. I should be able to play it. Belly Breathe Sesame Street song. 827 views three years ago. Sometimes the monster that's inside you is a monster that is mad. It's a monster who is angry. It's a monster who feels bad. Brother, you wrote, I used to love her. Listen to this flow, dude. What happened? When your monster wants to throw things and your monster wants to shout, there's a way to calm your monster and chill your inner monster out. Belly breathe, gonna breathe right through it, belly breathe. This is how you do it, breathe. Gonna breathe right through it, belly breathe. This is how you do it. Put your hands on your tummy, now you're ready to begin. Put your hands on your belly and you're slowly breathing. Pop a breathe, belly, belly, pop a pop a breathe. Belly, belly, breathe. Let your belly go out and in and in and out. And you'll start to calm down without a doubt. Anyway, you get the idea. Maybe, maybe you don't. We'll make you make a mad monster face in any place, and your mad monster may appear at any time in any place. And that mad monster will make you make a mad monster face. He makes you want to push. He makes you want to shove. There's a way to calm that monster. Bring out the monster love. It's so like not. He's just is beneath him. As long, I'm not saying being on Sesame Street is beneath a serious artist. I'm just saying he, he needed to bring he needed to bring something a little bit more serious, man. Like that's just He's cracked. What are you he's not cracked? I'm sorry, he's not He's not. I, I wish that it was it was different, but it isn't. Oh, man. What do you want him to do? Well, dude, you want to... While we're here, hang on. Oh, that you can't make a good song on Sesame Street? Okay. How about Billy Porter, Friends with a Penguin? I saw somebody I didn't know I felt shy Afraid to say hi I wasn't sure she'd like me then I tried Hi. hi. Want to play tag? Are you hearing this? Forgive it a try. Compared to what, what Common's putting out there? Your mad monster may appear at any time or any place, and that mad monster may make you make a mad monster face. It makes you want to push. It makes you want to shove. There's a way to calm your monster. Bring the monster love. Belly breathe. Bring do 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 do. You know, like it's just. I don't know if he wrote the song. Also, like I don't know if maybe the Sesame Street writers came to him and said, like, this is the song we got for you. In which case, like, I apologize to Common. I'm just saying, like, it's lower than the level I would expect a Common track to be at. You need to take the L on that one? The song is horrible, brother. It's so bad that Obama put it on his summer playlist, okay? Appeal to authority, technically. It's an inverted appeal to authority, so it's not a fallacy. Chat really be like... F you, you idiot, you suck and you're stupid. And then I'm like, you're mean. And they're like, that's an ad hominem attack. <laughs> Out of the presidents, Obama probably has a top 10 taste in music. Brother, there's like four living presidents, for one. Secondly, every president is in office for like four to eight years. But usually, the incumbents tend to win. So as a result, you know, you're talking to literally 10 presidents at a minimum gives you an 80-year window probably let's just split the difference and say 60 years nobody had good taste in music before 1950 that much well okay listen if you were in the mississippi delta maybe you had a good taste in music in like 1927 but for the rest everybody else in the world was just listening to whatever happened to be in the elevator at the time okay good music only started to exist around maybe 1961 so it's not of course I, every living president is top 10 taste in music Joe Biden strikes me as having surprisingly good taste in music for a man of his advanced age. Like, they, like to the point where you would be like, I believe that a publicist made up this list for him. Like, I could see Joe Biden name-dropping Japanese breakfast and people being like, what? 
Now, Donald Trump, I don't think he listens to music. I simply can't imagine Donald Trump being in his house and being like, I'm going to put on a song. Maybe it, <laughs> it's happened before. I just can't. I can't picture him being at home and cooking dinner and being like, I want to listen to something while I chop these vegetables. <laughs> Obviously, Obama listens to music. Um, George W. Bush, I bet he has normal taste in music. Bill Clinton loves saxophone music, of course. George H.W. Bush, his favorite song was Belly Breathe by Common, so we don't take that seriously. Oh, stoned me. Stoned man. Buys a stoat each time he can sell me. It became level three lioness stone man. Is that even how it goes? Oh, it's Friday. It's the first full work week I've had in a while. Oh. You gotta get sold. Don't be a lame, you know the game and how it goes. We're trying to get so you know what I listen, I'm gonna you have my word here. Three wins round nine. We will not go lioness, okay? Mostly because we have 10 minutes left. We can't afford for this one to go too much longer. So let's, we're going all in right now. You're selling me. We're running a taper at the front. Level three stoat. Sell me. Level three crocodile is madness. It's Lin Sanity. You come out here. Buy me. Sell me. Give me a freaking parrot, you piece of junk. I'm, I'm overpaying for chocolate. Tiger's also kind of cracked. Come out here. Do something. Holy. I won? <laughs> is level 2 stoat really better than level... Is level 3 stoat really better than level 2 stoat when you consider the only scaling in the pack is lioness? Get in, loser. We're going shopping. I don't know what you're talking about with all your arithmetic and stuff like that. Super Auto Pets? Twitch TV? What are you talking about? It's the day before Woodstock 99. We're going to have a fun time and experience a once-in-a-lifetime music festival that is going to uh, unite our generation in a feeling of togetherness, just like it did for our parents. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Level 3 Stoat gives higher dopamine. That's damn true. It might be the most true thing that you've ever said. Also, we won again. <laughs> no, we didn't! How did we not... How? How? The taper didn't get a trigger? Team Wood Games? Team Wood Games? Oh, there's no dudes to summon because the rest of the squad was yeeted. So true. You know what? That just means that we need to give you one of these. So true. Nice snipe. <laughs> oh, what? Hang on. No, nice snipe. <laughs> oh, man. How often do you skibbity in the toilet? You, it's, uh, the question doesn't make sense. You, the skibbity is out of the toilet. That's what's such a problem. That's why cameraman's trying to put the skibbity back in. You don't skibbity in the toilet. It's, it's, it's only a skibbity when there's skibbity out of the toilet. Good shot, kid. Good shot. We're not making it out of this one, that's for sure. Thoughts on the new Skibbity Toilet app? Never seen it. Never seen it. Thoughts on toilets in general? Top 30 invention in the history of mankind, probably. Did I ever tell you that my friend had a, a burning hatred for Bill Gates before it became cool and then also became uncool simultaneously? Bill Gates has got to be one of those guys where if you hate him, you have to make sure you articulate your reasons why. <laughs> you meet somebody and you bond over the fact that you both hate Bill Gates. You're like, wait, because he's taking credit for making self-composting uh, toilets, right? Even though 
they don't actually work that well. And they're like, no, nah, brother, because of the microchips. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> or they might be like, I just don't like him because he's rich. And I'd be like, okay, that's, you know, more power to you, I guess. That was why my friend hated him, was the toilet thing. This documentary came out that was like, um, Bill Gates was like, I'm saving the world from stinky poops that are disease ridden. And I watched it and I was, this was like seven or eight years ago. And I was like, this guy is a hero. I was telling my friend about it and he's, he's a wastewater engineer and he's like, Bill Gates is a charlatan. The toilets, he makes a big show of going down there and installing the toilets, showing everybody how they work. They don't work for a fraction of the money. They could just make a manual composting toilet that didn't rely on all this stuff that they uh, can't actually like make for themselves over there. Like they just, anyway. Why does he sound like Trump? I, he's my best friend, President Donald J. Trump. You know why? Because I prime myself with like, Bill, sad little Bill. Whether he's making toilets that don't compost or operating systems that are objectively worse than the one that came before or flying into Little St. James at the behest of his mutual friend Jeffrey Epstein. If he came to me and begged on his hands and knees for me to <laughs> provide sanctions on Linux, I would do it. Not bad. Honestly, the impression changes every day. Today's was pretty good, all things considered. Didn't even get an act three today, huh? Didn't even get an act three. With Chibli Chibli. <laughs> Sorry. I heard Hoover do a, an impression of Trump saying Chibli, and it just, it fit in my brain. Sweet little Chibli. We love our Chibli, don't we, folks? Yes, we do. We love our Chibli. We don't understand them all the time. Nobody does. But we love him. It is more like Bane, isn't it? You know why I'm here? Cactus Jack sent me. Now it's Agent Smith. Now that's me, 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 me. Donald Trump as Agent Smith. This is the end game of comedy. <laughs> me, 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 folks. People. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you guys remember when humanity lived in that cave? and we didn't see outside, we only saw the shadows on the wall that were cast by the light of the sun. We thought it was the real world because our frame of reference was so small, we didn't realize that it was merely a representation of what was happening in the real world. That what, you're telling me that's not literal? That wasn't a literal thing that happened? I thought that was like the first humans. Like Plato's age. Like they got out of the cave and they were like, whoa, snap. <laughs> Like when you go to a restaurant that you've been to many times and then you look, you're at the front desk and you're like, oh, maybe we should go someplace else. It looks really busy. I don't think there's a table. And then the hostess goes, yeah, we've got some room upstairs. And you're like, upstairs? I thought that was residential, sister. And then they take you up and then they're like, there's just one thing about sitting upstairs. You can't get fajitas because we can't get insured for the servers to carry the sizzling trays up the staircase. And you're like, well, the whole reason I came was for the fajitas. Now I got to get like a damn chimichanga or something like that. Would you be able to paint better paintings than the cavemen painted? Have you ever seen those paintings? They are, they suck really bad. I'm not blaming them, because the people who made the paintings must have been the best painters in the caveman days. I could, I could paint better than that. No doubt about it. No, you couldn't? I super could. There's no doubt about it. What about your picture for the Binding of Isaac Four Souls, though? We don't talk about that. That's, that's still an open wound, brother. Every once in a while, I'll see like a <laughs> tweet that's like, I don't get added in the tweet, but someone goes, uh, my... Kickstarter edition of Four Souls arrived. What the hell is this card? And then someone sees it and adds me, and I'm like, oh, brother. <laughs> the story of that is that I don't know how to draw is the first part. And then the second part is Edmund said, hey, just do a quick little uh, stick drawing of brimstone that we can use as an Easter egg for Four Souls. It'll be a lot of fun. And then I did a quick stick figure drawing of brimstone and I sent it to him and he said, not that casual. 
like, can you maybe submit a final draft instead of a rough draft? And then I just drew the same thing a little bigger, and he was like, I, I guess that's okay. <laughs> Every once in a while I see the art and I'm like, man, it, it does suck ass. Like, it's, there's no redeeming element to the art whatsoever. It's, it's so bad. You know what? It looks like one of those, like, uh, those, like, political cartoons that can't get their message across with just the pictures, so they have to write the message on the cartoon. It'll be like a... Like an old man trying to order a coffee, but he can't order it because he's trying to order a large and nobody knows what large means in 2023. So they do like a thought bubble that's like, what the hell happened to us? That is what my, my brimstone picture looks like. I can't believe this artwork comes with such a strong card. Looks like someone needed a bit more practice on Gardic phone. WTF. Is this a modified art card? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Let's see the quote tweets on that one. It's beautiful. The legend himself. And then one private quote tweet, I'm sure. Oh, man. I mean, it looks horrible. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I can't deny that. Oh, man. I was telling my wife. So, yes, if you weren't here yesterday, she had an allergic reaction to a mosquito bite. I know, like, every reaction to a mosquito bite is an allergic reaction. But she had, like, a big one. Like her knee was swollen up to like the size of like a mandarin orange and it's hot to the touch and she was putting ice packs on it like all night, even throughout sleepy time. Can I tell you, we as a, I don't get behind too many causes here, okay folks? We don't get behind too many causes here, just the worthy ones. We need to start a campaign to change the name of the syndrome of being hyper allergic to mosquito bites because it is not dignified. I had food poisoning. It was called Salmonella and Campylobacter illness due to foodborne disease. That's like a thousand words. It saved part of my dignity. My wife is having a reaction to a mosquito bite. It's called the Skeeter syndrome. We need to change this. We need to name it after the scientist who discovered it or something. We need to come up with a, we need to go back to Greek and make, call it like mosquito ditis or something like that. It, it, it's crazy, man. It's not dignified. Anyway, that's basically all I got. <laughs> My dad has a shoulder thing and it's called Milwaukee shoulder. Milwaukee shoulder. Milwaukee shoulder refers to a destructive shoulder arthropathy due to a deposition of hydroxapatite crystals. Holy cow. That's one. I'm glad they call that one Milwaukee shoulder because I don't know what any of those words mean. They chose the right name for that. Milwaukee shoulder. I'm sorry, let, first let me see how serious this is. No specific treatment is available, only support it. This isn't the kind of thing that kills you, right? It just is painful. It's still not, what I'm about to say is not nice, but it said epidemiology, Milwaukee shoulder frequently affects older women. Sorry, I didn't write it. This is, this is from Radio... Radiopedia.org. They're the ones who took a shot at your dad, okay? Your dad's an old woman. <laughs> yes. Get him off the stage. What is the Limmy clip? Limmy, your da wanks on all fours. <laughs> Instance to 30 fucking quid. Blumpkin Prince sticks to the 30 quid. Your dad wanks on all fours. That's actually against T.O. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Family thinks to three quid. Oh man, it's so good. I love the top comment too. Wow, his chat is something else. No lulls or omega lulls, just straight up. Ha 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 ha. Not even full caps like it was just mildly funny. And they're not even all gray names. First time I've seen a whole chat not using emotes to express themselves. Oh, man. Can somebody translate English is not my first language? 
your dad wanks on all fours. Okay, Kate is live. I will send you over there. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I will, I don't know, I can't stop talking like this, maybe on Monday. This is how we'll all talk from now on. What do you think? It's very satisfying. It doesn't even sound like him anymore. I'm just yelling. I'm just, I am rectangular. <laughs> Sorry. I feel no hope. Okay, love you. Love you too. Make sure you close the door. Oh, oh. Tomo tried to trip ya, dude. He he did he the would, he did he the he did the uh, he, did, he did the paw. He did the paw. Imagine if he did that and Ruka was behind me, like crouched down. Imagine he did that and you fell. That would be so good. And then my knees swelled up. <laughs> and it's called a uh, Tomo virus. Tripitis. Trip Tripitis. Did you tell Chet about how this uh infective? Where the allergy reaction is called skewed. I did. I said, we gotta, we gotta start a campaign to change the name. Because <laughs> I was like, when I ate raw chicken or raw pork, they didn't call it like dumb idiot food illness. <laughs> they called it, it was like foodborne illness due to salmonella and campylobacter. You get bit by a mosquito, it's skeeter syndrome. Ski <laughs> Mrs. got a dang case of skeeter syndrome. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go mudding this weekend. <laughs> mudden? Old lady's got a Skeeter syndrome. <laughs> Her ass is all swollen up. You know how it is. <laughs> Her ass got swollen. Her caboose got a little multiplicative. I don't even know what that means. Oh my god, but my knee? I barely had any sleep last night. Because I... I had to ice pack, like it, my knee, like you know how I like to sleep warm? So my body was under the blanket, all warmed up, but then my knee was like, it needs to be on the ice pack. So like, I only had my knee to poke out from the duvet cover to be out and be cold. But then like, you're, you know how a knee is not flat like it's it's not like one-sided it's it's a round shape so if i were to put ice pack on one side the other side gets really hot so i had to rotate so i basically got no sleep last night all i did was like okay this side is cold enough let me rotate and i rotate to the other side and i'm like okay now the other side is hot and then i will rotate and then there's like <laughs> i was like my god and then uh, last night, I was basically telling Ryan how like this, like you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't really move my legs. Well, I couldn't move my leg, one leg. Um, cause it, I couldn't like the knee and the joints were all like swollen so much that like it was so painful to move around. And then even like. Uh, Ryan's like, that looks really bad. I'm like, I know. But Luna wanted to go to the aquarium, so I did take her. I did take her this morning. I just like, whatever. I think I'll survive in the aquarium. Ow, 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 ow. It's alright. We, we had a good time. Eyes wrap around the leg. Dude, I got this cryo pack. Because ice melts before it can warm, uh, it, before it can cool down my knee, because my knee is like frayed up. And then uh, there's like the lunch, it's it's like ice pack for a lunch box that melts before it it gets cold enough. Oh, I'm getting a call. Well, hold on, I'll be right back. But I think my knee is bed, but it's not gonna get worse fingers crossed like i think it's just kind of kind of get better from this on i think is it better than yesterday no it's not it's worse than yesterday but i don't think it will get worse the medicine did not help at all unfortunately i i took it during the stream and then i took it before going to bed um but that did not help. 
But uh, hopefully I'll be able to sleep tonight. I mean, the crazy thing is that when you put ice on your skin, you know how it's like, ouch, that is cold. But my knee is so hot that if you were to put ice on my knee, I don't feel the cold. Like I can put the ice anywhere else on my body and I'll be like, ouch, that's too cold. But then on my knee, I'm like, I don't feel the cold. And if I take away the ice pack, even for two minutes, it will get back to like super hot temperature. But I was, uh, it's all right, it's all right. I just wanted to uh, kind of like congratulate myself for streaming without any interruption this week. Hooray! Ever since the move, I felt like I always got some kind of interruptions. But this week, I streamed no interruption Monday through Friday. I could have been like, I cannot stream with this Skeeter. <laughs> syndrome but i'm like nah dude i just need one hand on the controller they always go like oh you just got a mosquito bite how bad could that be and then i show them the picture of my knee and they're like oh my god that looks so fucked up you should go to er and i'm like no it's okay before picture ah, uh, come on it's just a mosquito bite after picture ah your knees are fucked up! Or your knee is fucked up. Oh, stole me! Stole man! Buys a stoat each time he can sell me. It became level three lioness stone man. Is that even how it goes? Oh, it's Friday. It's the first full work week I've had in a while. <laughs>